My name is Dr. Lindsay Fitzharris, and this is Under the Knife, a series dedicated to the horrors of pre-anesthetic surgery. In the first episode, we're going to be looking at my favorite medical history object, the clockwork saw. The reason why the clockwork saw is my favorite object is because it was a massive fail in our medical past, and it reminds me of the necessity of failure in both science and in medicine. The clockwork saw was created by a man named W.H.B. Winchester in the 19th century, who was obsessed with speed. But of course, all surgeons were obsessed with speed at this time, because it was a matter of life and death. The fastest knife in the West End belonged to a man named Robert Liston, who could remove your leg in about two and a half minutes. Not too bad. And his patients agreed. They would line up for literally days to have Liston perform the surgery rather than chance it with one of his colleagues who had much higher mortality rates. In fact, Liston created his own double-edged lancet, later known as the Liston knife, which was the weapon of choice by Jack the Ripper. But back to W.H.B. Winchester and his dilemma. He wanted to create an instrument that would speed up the process of taking off a human leg. And so we came up with the clockwork saw. Oh, how convenient. Thanks, Bucket. As you can see, this is the clockwork saw. The way that it worked, this rather terrifying instrument, was that you would wind it up, and when you released it, the blade would continue to spin. It's kind of like a precursor to a modern day chainsaw. I think that's mine. I need that. I have, I have one on the table. He's warm. I thank you. Where was I? Oh yes, the pitfalls of the clockwork saw. So what W.H.B. Winchester gained in speed, he lost in precision. It was a really unwieldy instrument and he had trouble handling it. So the first and only time he tried it out, he accidentally took off his assistant's fingers. In fact, it was such a failure that it never made it out of prototype phase. And the only clockwork saw in existence is on display at the Hunterian Museum at the Royal College of Surgeons in London. But Winchester wasn't alone in his failure. Liston, who was one of the greatest surgeons of his time, had his fair share of failure as well. In fact, one time he accidentally took off his patient's testicle along with the leg, and another time he took off his assistant's finger as well as slashed the jacket of a spectator as he was changing instruments. And as a result, the patient died of post-operative infection. The assistant died of gangrene later from the severed finger, and the spectator died of a heart attack. It is the only surgical case in history that has a 300% mortality rate. Ugh, oh, that was gross. I'm out of here. I don't know. A little bit of blood, a chopped off hand. Oh, honestly, I'm always blaming the surgeon. That, Cummings, is the finger of blame. Oh, oh yes, sir. Very, very funny, sir. <laughs> Shut up, Cummings. Impudent <laughs> little son. I don't show no respect for modern medicine. In my day, oh. I'm not... oh.